Welcome to Exploring Arizona Life Science Research and Biodiversity with the Tree of Life Web Project. Visit podcasts at towweb.org for learning materials to accompany this episode and to find out how to contribute to the series. I'm Lisa Schwartz, Tow Learning Materials Editor, reporting on a workshop taught by Brad Lancaster that teaches about using water harvesting techniques to create sustainable and biodiverse Sonoran Desert habitat within an urban area. This segment focuses on the mulch basin and curb cutting technique as well as optimal types of plants for landscaping. So here, one of the big problems is our perceived lack of water. And uh, really, I feel our lack of water is just due to our mismanagement and our waste of the water we do have. Uh, it's interesting to note that for every inch of rain that falls on a one acre parcel of property, you're getting 27,000 gallons of water. You multiply that by 12 because we get 12 inches of rain, you've got a lot of water. Um, so we're trying to access and harvest that abundant rainwater here. And one of the ways we're doing it is by creating these mulched and vegetated basins that are placed right alongside the street. So we depress the planting area, we mulch it with uh, organic matter, and this way we create a living sponge that will readily infiltrate the water into the soil so that we can take the runoff water that runs along the curb of the street and used to just go into the storm drain but will instead now fill the basin. But the, the main thing here is we want to make the reason we're putting in a terrace for some of the plantings is that we don't want the base of the plant to be too inundated with water. So we get the base of the plant a little higher from the, where the bulk of the water is infiltrating. The roots will be able to access the water, but we won't get crown rot at the base of the plant. So you can see that here is more the lower spot where we're going to have more of the water accumulate. And then we'll have the plants a little bit higher. We will then come back later and we're going to seed this whole area. And we'll let the uh, seeds self-select. So the plants that like more water will germinate down here. Those that like it better drain will germinate up here. These basins catch and retain water and create an optimal environment for plants to thrive. I know they look tiny now, but this wolfberry is going to be at least this big, full of thorn and great nesting habitat. And the gray thorn is going to be taller than me and just taking up this whole back end. And the two are going to intertwine to create this great farmer's market of nesting sites and food source for the uh, birds because they love the uh, wolf berries and they love the uh, gray thorn berries. And then the hummingbirds will come for the chuparosa which has edible flowers, the palo verde, um, the de desert tortoise loves to eat the flowers, we can too, they're great on salads and you can eat the fully mature sized seed that's still green but yet has not yet turned brown. It tastes like barley um, and uh, it's great in rice and uh, pasta dishes. This is a very fragrant plant. It's a Loisia ridei, um, bee bush. So we want that fragrance out closer to the people that are parking and walking by. And then we just tucked a, a wolfberry in there so it's evergreen. So in the winter when stuff goes leafless, it won't look bare. At least we'll have that evergreen looking lush here. While they worked, I asked Brad and the volunteers about what they were planting. Wildflower seeds and some perennial uh, woody species like uh, bursage, brittle bush, um, a lot of annuals like uh, marigold, poppies, lupins. We just have a mix of native wildflowers from the Sonoran Desert and we'll lightly sprinkle um, all over this area so then uh, in the spring after the rains uh, this will be like a bird buffet. Lots of great beautiful flowers that uh, neighborhood folks will like to come and see as well as watching the hummingbirds and all sorts of other stuff. Wow, I can't wait to see what comes up. Special thanks to Brad Lancaster, the students and volunteers, and the Nature Conservancy.